Won't be scared of falling down no more. Welcome to the Poker Ain't Life podcast, where we try to debunk the million dollar question, is life all about poker? Today, we have the poker vlogger, all the way from India, and man, can I tell you, it was very difficult trying to schedule this this interview, but uh, very happy we made it happen. Um, We got Damien, our lovely co-host, maybe I should find a better adjective than lovely, (laughs) but uh, I'll take lovely. (laughs) <laughs> what's up everybody good how's it going guys. good morning to you guys Damien thanks for making this happen oh my god well <laughs> thank you for joining in well good morning <laughs> all right I don't know what happened to the, the to the um to the camera I told you so, someone someone's tech knew about her <laughs> yeah uh, there you go I think fingers crossed it looks good so good morning to us and good night to you uh what time is it by you right now it's it's 8 56 p.m yeah and wow. i think it must be 10 a.m for you guys yeah but finally we could make it it's it's really it's really worth the wait after all the heckles that we had to face and finally we are here doing this yeah. mm-hmm. good things come to those who wait all right uh tony i'll kind of hand it over to you to start off um all right so what is your name and where are you from so tony uh as people call you mcclopity your channel People call me poker blogger. My name is Manchu Shikara. I am from India, and I'm I was a recreational poker player until some time back. Only recently I turned pro. I have been uh, playing this game for over a decade. I would say 14, 15 years when I learned it, started playing it, but it was never playing as a profession. Mm. It was only recently, a couple of months back, that I decided to give it a try as a profession and yeah things are going good so what's a what what does a professional look like in india i know you said that poker really starts after eight and is is poker illegal in india or no poker is not illegal in india poker is totally legal when you talk about playing professionally as a poker player in india there are a handful of people who have been traveling and playing poker, traveling to US, to EPTs, to WSOP, to Asian Poker Tours, and to other live tournaments. So online poker started in India back in 2014 or 15, but live games were there back in 2011 also, 2010 also, but they they were very limited. Considering the population that India has, considering the uh, you know the uh, number of people that actually play the game, but that converting to this uh, game coming as a profession to them is yeah. very limited. Yeah. It's not even handful, I would say. Oh, so, wow. I mean, none of the Indians have ever made it to the final table of a WSOP main event. Mm-hmm. That is only because people are not participating. Uh, but people who are participating, who are traveling, I respect those guys because they went against the societal norms. They took this very unorthodox uh, decision of pursuing this game as a profession. And they set examples for the Indian society where people want to pursue this game but are unable to because of so many other reasons. Yeah. So yeah. respect that's why to those guys. Yeah. That, and honestly, that's kind of what the... the the show or the podcast is about i mean when you know like a lot of these countries and places that we've come from like me and damien we're jamaican you know there's but we may be the only two jamaican <laughs> poker players out al- al- like alive <laughs> to be honest <laughs> we may be and like there's a small handful and it's because you know this regardless of playing poker just getting out of out of you know this the, the this country and the the poverty and all the extra stuff that you know goes on in life um right. that's that's you know a struggle in itself so poker really is like secondhand for a lot of these people even if they want to you know try to pursue the you know that type of thing or that type okay. of lifestyle and um, that's so true and that's so relatable yeah i was also going to say to poker vlogger it's like 
I'm sure there's some limitations in terms of the types of games. Like for me, all I've played was Hold'em. Um, I lived in Texas a little bit and then I had to learn PLO because not everywhere offered Hold'em. A lot of people wanted to play PLO. Um, so like um, for you, do you prefer cash? Do you like tournaments? What style of poker do you prefer? And uh, what do you play? What games are available by you? So uh, in recent years, uh, due to, see, one of the reasons that poker picked up in India, online poker very specifically, was pandemic also. So the, the number of players, it, it, it shot up like anything. So these players, most of the players in India, they have started playing online. Their first introduction to the game came online. So they have, they have very limited experience in terms of live games, but they want to travel, they want to play. In India, as a stru structure as a whole in uh, poker industry, PLO 6 has also come. So definitely PLO is there, PLO 5 is there, PLO 4 was there, PLO 6 has also come out. NLH, no doubt, there are numerous games, bounty tournaments, all those games are there in, in tournament structure if you talk about. On the other hand, if you talk about cash games, there are very good cash games happening in the Indian subcontinent region. Now, in India, there are a couple of locations, uh, like in Goa, we have uh, casinos where poker rooms are uh, operated. There are no uh, poker rooms in every state of India. India, if you look at it geographically, has very limited poker rooms, but those poker rooms are always full of action. Mm -hmm. Why? Because not only Indians, people coming from outside, from different uh, countries, be it Europe, be it Asian countries, they love playing this game. And Everyone who's involved in this industry knows each other, and it's a very close-knit uh, community. Everyone is uh, trying to push poker as a sport, as a game of skill in India. So the major focus comes on tournaments, but cash games are also a very uh, you know lucrative option for people to just go and play recreationally uh, when people are on vacations. So if you talk about uh, Poker professionals who play only cash games are very limited, but aspirational, aspiring poker players who wish to make their mark in the world poker scenario as a whole to participate in WSOP and win those tournaments, mm. it's rising day by day. And mm. it, it is very, uh, you know, it's very bright to see such numbers coming up. So Indian oh. poker future is very bright. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I, I like to hear that. I, I like to hear that because, I mean, even just traveling, um, one thing that's really opened up my mind recently is um, living in Florida. There are poker rooms where a lot of the population is Cuban, where everyone's speaking Spanish, but the style of play is a little bit different. So for you, do you think like, um, I don't know if you play on any sites that offer like um, America's card room or any of the sites that have uh, American players. Do you think there's a difference between the playing styles from like Indian players and like uh, American players. I know there's a stigmatism for like European players. Like what's the stigmatism towards like just Indian players and uh, American players in India? Like what stigmatism is there out there for player types? So honestly, uh, I have not been exposed to many such games. I have started playing on uh, GG Poker, on N8 and on these websites. But my seniors who have been continuously uh, playing on these portals, they definitely bring up this point always that, you know, uh, Asian field is so different, Indian field is so different. When they go to EPTs, the field is entirely different. And when they play in WSOPs, when they go to the, uh, you know, American field, it is completely different. So, but then again, it's a challenge. Uh, a poker player never knows who's going to sit right next to him. Uh, be it a live tournament, online tournament. So they are always prepared for that and they guide us to be free-minded most of the time, all the time, in fact, so that you play your A game. So yeah, again, respect to those seniors in the industry. <laughs> they have been guiding us. So you guys don't have any stereotypes about U.S. players? Because I know I because, the stereotype yeah. I have for Indian players, I, and just in my mind, is that you guys are aggressive and you guys are always trying to exploit gamble. and bluff me. and <laughs> Big gamble. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Is it? But, well, I don't know if that's what how everybody thinks, but the, the few Indian players that I've played against, 
they're very they're very aggressive and they're trying to balance their bluffs and they're so strong. Probably, pro probably one of the reasons for such uh, perception that you form is Indian players are working very hard on their th theoretical part. They are studying the game. They are seeking guidance from the foreign players who have good experience. Mm. So everybody focuses on one particular thing that if you have to be at your A game, you have to balance your game. So you know what I never have... asked you? Sorry, go ahead, finish it now. Yeah. So, so, so if you have to balance your game, then you must know all your gloves also, all your values also. So right. probably, I don't know you uh, who played against you, but... Uh, that was my, <laughs> this, was, this was my question. This is my next question. Do you know who uh, Victor Ramdin is? Victor Ramdin? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that, that might not even it, be his. Let's see, let's... Uh... Is that a, a screen name that you mentioned? No, that's his real name. I played with him live in a um, in a uh, poker tournament. He a few poker tournaments, but I ended up at a final table with him. And probably uh, he must have moved to US, and he must be playing from there. Only. That's what I'm wondering. You ever seen this guy? Uh, no. My if I have missed some very important player, then my bad. But no, I know. No. No, that's okay. No, I don't. I mean, he's a pro, but I don't think he's like you know, like a pro pro. He's probably he must be playing in US only. He must have moved to US and must be playing there for some. Yeah, time now. yeah, probably. Yeah. Yep. Um. All right. So, uh, you kind of started talking about places to play. I I wanted to know. So, as a US player, if we were to come over to India, where would be like the the best touristy casino or like where do all the tourists go to India to play poker, I guess? So if you come to India, if you come to subcontinent for the metro track, Goa is the place to be. There are four to five different poker rooms that are operated in different casinos. Okay. And these these uh, these casinos, these poker rooms, they have very good cash action. They have tournaments running, but uh, tournaments are once in a while kind of a thing, but cash action is always there. And uh, yeah, in good numbers. That's so, Roha? Goa. G-O-A. Goa. G-O-A. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, uh, towards South India, uh, Southeast, Southwestern India. Yeah. Okay. That's and it's, it's it's one of the prime tourist destinations in India. So, yeah. Okay. You, 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 you see so many first timers also playing there. You see so many recreational players also playing there. So. Okay. Cool. All right. So now to flip it on you. One of the questions we've been asking everybody is what's, we, we talked about what's the, the, it doesn't matter, what's the sketchiest or do you know what sketchy is to me? Like what's the sketchiest or like scariest poker situation that you've been in where you like look around and you're like, I don't know if I should be playing poker here. <laughs> I shouldn't be playing poker here. Yeah, like it's sketchy, like you could get robbed or, you know. Or Maybe like a house game complete. or a, a game in the back of a bar or back so, of a restaurant. Like not yeah. an official game, a legalized game, but where one would you like Where would you tell poker players not to go play poker? How about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so honestly, I won't say that you shouldn't be going to that place and play. But uh, back in 2018, I was in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. And there's this pro poker club. I was playing, I went for Asian Poker Tour and games were over. So I thought of playing some cash games. I, I made some good money out there, but uh, it was my first uh, live cash game outside India. So I thought, uh, I, uh, since I won the money, there were so many, uh, you know, my uh, table mates whom I played against who were talking to some random guys. And those random guys looked very fishy to me. And on my way back, I saw a couple of them. So probably I, I was wondering, are these guys following me or something like that? Yeah. So that was the only scariest experience that I had. But yeah, otherwise, people are very good when it comes to... You, know, you said that was in Vietnam? Yeah, yeah, that was in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, yeah. No, that definitely sounds scary too. I mean, the... It's but always when you... good, but those guys were good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, we, we know what they're looking for you. We know what they're looking for you, especially after you won. Now, being that, well, it's good to hear that you're on GG. I haven't played on like the major sites, and I feel like some people play online, so their their favorite players are like online players or online personalities like 
For me, I go by Come On Sud. We have Mick Floppy. We have you, the poker vlogger. Or some people that play live, their favorite player may be someone that plays on like TV or a cash game. So I'm curious for you, who's your favorite player and why? My favorite player has to be Bill Ivy because... <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay so in most of the situations like when i'm following the game in my head i am uh, you know uh, predicting certain moves and anticipate moves, what they're going to do next exactly exactly those those uh, when, when when he makes those moves and when they go through i'm like okay i was on the table i did that and it went through so i am i i could relate my game style with him very much and uh, that's why I love his game style, and uh, he's my favorite poker player. Uh, he's he's up there with me too. And I think one of the things that Ivy does well is when he stares at you. Like there's exactly. nothing. Yeah, when he looks at you, like that's one thing live. That when you play online, you don't have to worry about that. But when you're playing live and you're bluffing. And they're looking at you and your heart's like this. And you're like, oh, don't call, don't call. Like, I think he does a really good job of um, just reading people when you play live and trying to figure out if you're bluffing or if you have a hand or not. I think that's one of the abilities that uh, makes him last so long. So I'm curious, um, in terms of abilities, what do you think is like one of your best abilities just in terms of poker? So my ability to stay calm in any situation is my uh, my strength, I would say. And despite people knowing this, I am still able to maintain it. And I not only uh, think that it is my strength, I work towards it. How do I work towards it? I, I do certain meditations. I, I do underwater swimming so that I'm able to keep myself, my breath in control whenever I want to. If you look at most of the world-class athletes, uh, the top achievers, their main, their main strength is to keep their pulse heart rate under control. That's below sixty. If someone is able to do that, it's a it's a great achievement for them, and it really helps in any game, not only poker. Damien, we lost you. <laughs> yeah, we lost Damien. I don't know where he went. Wait, keep your heart rate under sixty. You calculate your heart rate. You know how to calculate your heart rate. No, the, uh, we got technology to track it. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if if you are in any kind of uh, athletic sports, yeah. so it is it is one of the prime things that uh, you are taught that if you are able to control your heartbeat, like if you are able to maintain it for a certain time, then that means you can keep calm under any situation. So, that this was something that was taught to me by one of my uh, coaches during my school days. And while practicing it. So if you look at a couple of my videos, I do underwater swimming a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that's like you are not breathing. You, you just, uh, you know, inhale, go for deep dives. And, you know, that really helps. So, I'm not sure what Damien is up to. I don't know what he's doing either. He's, he's partially. Oh, no, I'm still here with you. I was, relo I was relocated. So that way we didn't have background noise. But I, I was going to say the breathing that you mentioned, Poker Vlogger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that helps. I agree with you because there's times you try to hold your breath because if you hold your breath, like if you look no. on someone's <laughs> chest, you could see their chest moving like that. Like, but like if you this hold exactly. your breath, I like Sometimes that. it's like it's going to pop out. Of yeah, your don't you know? hold your breath. <laughs> I have. I've almost passed. I've literally put my face like in a shirt before trying to hide myself. <laughs> literally like this, like trying yeah. to not give any tells. But I, I like that too. I, the only problem is I can't swim. Wait, you can't swim, bro? Come on, man. I can't swim. They, where, where is there water in New York? Uh, there's no place for me to learn to swim. So now I got to learn to swim. So I can learn how to bluff. All right, now I got extra motivation. <laughs> That's a. I, I mean, maybe not. Maybe I don't know. That's a, so. What do you do with? What do you do? Do you do heart rate or breathing training with poker? Uh, you yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, so I, I regularly practice the swimming, uh, holding my breath practice, and also to stay still. If you look at Olin Poker, the guy who won this year's WSOP main event, mm -hmm. this guy had to hold his breath. He had to sit still 
uh, till the other guy, the one who finished runners up, he didn't make that call. If you remember, if you have seen that hand, the final table heads up. Mm -hmm. It was a 19 minute, 17, 18, 19 minutes. He Definitely over 15 minutes. You're correct. Because I fast forwarded some of it. Yeah. yeah. And how can someone do like that? Yeah. Because it's not one day that he uh, just was sitting there and it was like, okay, okay, I have to, you know, just sit like this. Mm -hmm. He had been practicing meditation for quite a long time. Yeah. For past four or five years. Yeah. And it finally paid off on that one day, right? And that won him the main event. Yeah. So, Definitely, I mean, yeah. there are so many off the table things that I believe in that you must do to be the ultimate champion. And it's a, it's a continuous process of learning and practicing and, you know, evolving. So, yeah, I was really impressed. Uh, yeah. when he did that so i never so that's 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 so interesting to me i mean i always when i play poker i try to remain still but i never like tried to just like practice that off the table as well you know definitely and i never hold my breath <laughs> because i'm i'm scared <laughs> if i hold my breath i'm gonna go <laughs> you know <laughs> but i'm just like ah oh, yeah i bluffed <laughs> can't take my chips <laughs> so I don't, I don't hold my breath and i think too i have like sleep apnea so i breathe really hard so if i tried to hold my breath it wouldn't turn out well <laughs> you know? but, uh, i mean see uh, it's not only the breath like first you have to uh, attain certain fitness levels because you are going to sit for really long hours yeah. so sitting idle for long hours requires your core structure to be in such a uh, stamina or such a shape that you are able to hold that. Yeah. Be it online, be it live, any. So right. that, I, I that is also something that poker players should work upon. I, I and are working with, upon that. Yeah. I was going to say, I agree with you with the stand-in. Like, I've never played a two-day tournament until this year. Normally, mm -hmm. I go for, like, little small tournaments. This year, one of the goals for me was to make a two-day tournament. And then um, you mentioned earlier, too, that, you know, you work earlier and then, you know, after work, then there's the second job like poker. So sometimes you sit all day long for your regular job, then sit in all day long again for poker. Like when I play after work, I have to stand up. I have to stretch. Like a lot of times I'm, I'm the guy getting a massage because you're sitting so <laughs> long, your back hurts, your leg goes numb. So um, but before we transition to Tony's question, I was just curious, um, in India, do they give like massages at the table? Do they have massage yes. girls at the table too? Yes, they do. They do. Hey, all right, I'm gonna pay you a visit. I gotta Someone pay you a visit. visit. <laughs> you guys are most welcome to visit India anytime. Uh, one of these things. You notice Damien said all the good poker you were talking about and and Goa and all that. And don't do, Damien wasn't trying to come, but as soon as you mentioned uh, massage, massage girl, <laughs> Damien's there. You know, yeah, I, can't, I can't get that on GG. I can't get that online poker. I need, <laughs> I need the live element. That's my best part about live. Um, Where do you guys often play? Like, what's your uh, normal uh, poker room that you guys visit? Is it like somewhere nearby, or do you travel to play? So, Tony, you want to go first, or you want me to go? Um, I'll go. So I play everywhere. I mean, that I can, I play, um, I play online. I play on the apps. Uh, in the U S we have these apps on our phone, like poker bros and poker two oh. app. Um, that we have clubs and stuff for us. So I'll play in those just, you know, while I'm doing all my other various projects like editing and stuff. Um, but I would say like six months ago, I was playing on GG poker and natural A and all those sites. Um, about six months before that, I was playing on ACR, Ignition, Global. Um, but really, I just play on live, uh, play live. We were kind of talking about it. Play a lot of bar um, tournaments. They have this thing called the Eastern Poker Tour. And okay. um, there's, there's, every, every, they, they're all over the, the Eastern part of the U.S. And okay. um, you can play in bars and there's like leagues and you can win. Uh, seats to to bigger uh, championship games like Vegas so they have like a, like a point system and if you know throughout the year if you collect enough points they send like the top three to Vegas but they also have EPT has like their own Vegas tournament mm -hmm. that they host as well so it's um so it's cool I play in there just kind of for fun but it's you know that's quite interesting you, I mean the number of games that you guys have that's really good yeah, and then and then there's like, but though even that's just like small leagues. Like I'll put in like 
30 bucks to 50 bucks and I can walk away like somewhere from 500 to a thousand or whatever. But then there's, then there's like the, the big casino tournaments, which I, you know, travel to, I, in 2019, I won the two big ones at Foxwoods, which is about an hour from me. And, um, and ever since then, right after that COVID happened and when, when COVID, the, the pandemic happened, all poker shut down and Foxwoods and the, the tournaments around me kind of haven't, the casinos around me haven't really been having tournaments lately. So I've been kind of sticking with the, the bar tournaments, but in 2023, everything's coming back. So we're going to, I'm going to be hitting Foxwoods heavy. I'm going to be going, traveling a lot. Once you start going towards Damien's neck of the woods, that's where everybody's kind of located and uh, that's where everybody plays poker. So I'll be traveling to some of the bigger cities and making it happen, trying to, trying to put in 500 and turn it into six figure, six figure scores. You know? One day, Tony, good luck, one good day. Luck, for, good luck, buddy. Good luck. All our best wishes with you. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. Sending you good vibes. Yes, for, Hopefully, for... I'll also be traveling to US sometime soon for okay. the games. I'm trying this coming WSOP if things are fine. Oh. So, probably. There we go. Uh, Me and Damien yeah. are trying to get down there. Yeah, depending on how the big, beginning of the year goes, I plan on Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. For me, okay, I'm so. I'm literally in two of the biggest, like outside of Vegas, I'm in two cities that are really good for poker. So mm-hmm. I used to live in Texas. So like mm-hmm. my company, they're in Texas too. I think um, we, we do have Indeed in India, right? Like yeah. a website mm-hmm. company, Indeed.com. Indeed, yeah, Indeed. Yeah, all right. So yeah, I work, yeah. that's the company I work for. So they have an office okay. in Texas. Interesting, nice. And we just opened an office in Florida. So I get to wow. play in both states a lot because I work remote. So as long as there's Wi-Fi, I could go. So sometimes <laughs> I play in Texas, sometimes I play in Florida. So it's a really good realm because there's good cash games in Texas, but there's really good tournaments in Florida. So it's a good right. balance between the two. So a lot of times I get to work and then when work's over, I get a chance to go and play a tournament or play cash too. So those are the two areas. So you're always welcome. So I live in Florida. So if you ever... Outside of WSOP, Florida um, has some really good tournaments in Miami. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're welcome to come. To, I'll host you in Miami, and I'll bring you to some of the games, too. All right? Thank you so much. Would love to uh, when things happen. So I definitely love to come. So, I feel like we didn't talk um, anything about what, you're, <laughs> about what you do. What do you do for work? What do you, what do you, um, you're on a, a Indian poker TV reality show? Oh, like yes. Okay, so I'm going to introduce, uh, uh, this This is India's first poker-based reality show. Huh. And so since since poker is very, uh, you know, very limited people know about poker, only only people who play it or people who whose relatives, they play, they only know about it. But this game involves strategy, this game involves so many different aspects apart from cards. Yeah. So this player hunt uh, is a web series. Uh, it's in a form of web series. It has seven episodes. If you talk about uh, season two, so okay. it's creating awareness about this game and it's finding the next big superstar in poker domain across India. Be it an established player, be it a new player. So it is open to everyone. So anyone and and anyone who anyone and everyone who plays poker can be on this show showcase their skills make a mark for themselves and get that push in their uh, career so that they can pursue it professionally if they want to so yeah. awesome so it's called the player hunt it's called the player hunt it okay. is organized by the company it's called poker high okay. the player hunt presented to you by poker high so poker high is one of the leading indian poker portals which was started back in uh, 2015 Again, so yeah. Okay. And hey, I games? gotta ask Tony. I, I'm just, how'd you get on the show? Oh yeah. Like, was it like a contest? Was it the biggest winners? Like, how'd you get selected to be on the show? So, so basically, you have to. So there are uh, different structures. If you are a cash game player, then you put in, uh, you showcase your cash game skills. There are different parameters that uh, you are being uh, evaluated upon, and there are different tournaments that happen every fortnightly which again tracks your progress and you are awarded points on those bases then 
uh, a certain number of people they are invited for the audition round people who clear the audition round advance to the tv round so and tv round is shot in some undisclosed location and that's how we, uh, we go about it nice. interestingly uh, poker the player hunt season 3 is already announced and the shooting for the same begins in april okay. and yeah so does would the, love to invite you guys yeah <laughs> does, the, does the first does the person that win so what does the person win they the last person standing they win money or they win like a promotion so oh. so, so poker in india is in nascent stage if we talk about those things so first thing is that you know the recognition that the show brings to you as an individual secondly it also brings you the opportunity to collaborate with different brands yeah. and if you are exceptionally well then you know uh, people also uh, make you their brand ambassadors like if we talk about indian focus scenario uh, the 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 person the individual my fellow contestant samir singh modi who won this event uh, is has become mentor for next season so that's a that's a you know recognition that he is god I represent Poker High, the company that organized this one. Another first runner is Zarwan. He is a world class player. He has already won a WPT Prime, first WPT Prime that happened in Vietnam. So that's a big achievement again. Yeah. And he also represents one of the Indian poker companies. So okay. the recognition that it brings, the acceptance, and obviously when these things come, money is a byproduct yeah. that comes along with the contracts. Yep. So yeah through branding and through, you know, ad spacing and all types of companies reaching out to you, all types of stuff. Nice. I get it. So you came in second for season one. Is that what it I was? came third. I came third. Oh, third. I okay. came third. Yeah. Second runners up. <laughs> okay. Still, man, very great accomplishment. That's awesome. And now where, where can we watch these uh, episodes? How can we, so, can we watch them? So these are on YouTube. So okay. These are on YouTube and I'll share the link with you guys. And, uh, uh yeah we'll get those links in the description of this and you know thank you so much that'd be awesome um and let's see i think we're up to the million dollar question tony yeah i'm not sure about this million dollar question because you 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 played me last time and just just took took the the tally mark and just hopped off the hopped off the interview when we weren't able to <laughs> really dive into what he was saying but go ahead you can you can take it all right, the million dollar question. In my world, poker ain't life. I've lost a lot, I've won, and then lost that as well. So for me, I try to just have fun with the game where I tr the times I win is the times where I don't make everything about poker. It's not the times where I'm playing 10 days in a row or sun up and sun down. The times I do well is the times where I just play like, you know, on the side, a couple days a week versus every day. So for me, my stance is that poker in life. And then, um, Tony, I'll let you give your stance. Man, I don't, poker in life, man. That's my stance now. <laughs> 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 I, just, I, I, I said the same thing Poker Moses said, man. That <laughs> poker ain't necessarily life, but it's, you know, it's a means to having a better life for sure. You know, if, if done right. So the million dollar question to you is that is poker life or poker ain't life? Okay, so this is very interesting question. I must really <laughs> appreciate you guys performing this one. So for me, poker is passion, which I made a purpose of my life, honestly. Poker gives me sane. Poker gives me empowerment. Poker gives me, it's not only about financial freedom. There are many other life aspects that it brings. How you handle different situations, how you handle crisis, how you are when you have uh, almost everything in your control. All those situations, life doesn't give you every now and then, but in a poker tournament, those situations are created every now and then. In a single poker tournament, if you look at, it's a lifespan that an individual goes through. So when you are registering till the time you finish uh, final table in the money, heads up, or you come out as a champion, there are so many life 
situations where you have to make those life changing decisions so these are your tournament changing decisions so that's how i look at poker so i consider it as yes poker is life it's a parallel universe that helps you be better at this life that we are living in a physical uh, world yeah, so. <laughs> that's what i'm talking about right there that was a very good answer man for real and, and honestly he's right like if you think about it like as you're going through the steps of the tournament like a lot of those things like i i got aces but maybe i should fold them you know you could really you, you you get a nice new rolex but you know rents do like return that rolex pawn that rolex man you gotta get that you gotta get pay that rent it's the same thing man you know there's tons of life lessons that could you know be related to poker and vice versa i agree i think that was a he was was well said he he, so right now the running tally is tied up up. two (laughs) two so i appreciate you on this episode i think you brought a really great perspective that a lot of us haven't seen before um not only from your uh poker is life stance because now i'm looking at like hey you know what Poker vlogger is right. Poker may be like, <laughs> and also just sharing your experiences from different places you've played. And then also just sharing your experiences, just how, you know, how you view things and your favorite player. So I think it's yeah. really great because uh, you said something in the beginning that most people don't realize, which is poker is a sport. So the yeah. same way, uh, let's say basketball is a sport and there's teams all around. Recently, there was a World Cup and people that play, you know, football or soccer from around the world. And if you think yeah. about it, it's called WPT because it's the World Poker yeah. Tour or the exactly. World Series. Season. So I think you made a really good point when you said that it is a sport. Um, and I think this was a really great episode. So just thank you for coming on, Poker Vlogger. I think you, you opened up my perspective to new things and showed us a different side of poker in the world that most of us probably haven't seen or knew existed. So definitely thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you, man. Is there anything Thanks you want to shout out? Me. Anybody you want to shout out real quick before you get off? Shout out to you guys taking uh, such efforts to bring different uh, people from through uh, across the globe on your show and, you know, bringing different perspectives to this game, to, uh, you know, uh, educate people about poker, to spread awareness, not only about poker, but different countries playing poker. So, I mean, yeah. People need this. This is the need of art that, you know, people are motivated enough to stay in the game. In India, poker is booming. One day, India is going to have WSOP of its own and we are going to be there, all of us together. Let's do it. The people, the players, they are in large number and we are looking forward to seeing you guys globally in India, in US or anywhere else. Thanks Let's for go. Me. All right. Thanks I'm hyped so up now. I'm looking up flights to India. Let's go, Toby. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we can end it there, man. Oh, I get control of the recording now, too? Yeah, I gave you control. I'll let you do it. Uh, <laughs> boom. <laughs> See y'all later.